Hey guys, a uh, really quick video today. I know that a lot of you are starting to receive your high bandwidth dash cams and a lot of you probably have them on the way as well. So I wanted to let you know from my experience of the last month mapping what the most important things are that you have to do to ensure that you can maximize your earnings and get paid as much money as possible. So the first thing you wanna do, no matter what device you're using, whether you're on iPhone, Android, anything else, you wanna make sure that you have the app open in the foreground at all times. The long-term goal here of Hypapper is to have this process as passive as possible so you can just have the app running in the background, but right now, you need to have the app open all the time on your phone in order to maximize the amount you're mapping. I've done some tests and I was getting less than half of the mapping data collected when I just had the app open on background mode. So this is obviously not particularly convenient if you are using your main phone and you need to use Google Maps or Waze or uh, whatever other apps you're using while you're driving. So one solution that I found works really well is using a second phone to map on it. So this second device, it can just be any old phone that you might have lying around at home. It doesn't even need to have a SIM card in it. You don't need an internet connection in order to map. You do need an internet connection in order to connect the high mapper apps to the Phantom app, but if you don't have a SIM card in that phone, just tether the internet off that, share your personal hotspot with the phone that doesn't have the SIM in it, and you'll be able to connect the high mapper app, disconnect the Wi-Fi, and then reconnect back to the Dashcam's Wi-Fi in order to map on that phone. So this is my main phone here that I use for Google Maps and Spotify, whatever else when I'm driving because it has an internet connection. This is the phone that I use for mapping. It's an Android device. I find that they work a little better at the moment than iPhone. And this one does not have an internet connection. So as you can see, it's asking me to connect my wallet. I can't do that at the moment because I don't have an internet connection. So what I do is I've turned the personal hotspot on on this phone. I come into my Wi-Fi settings, disconnect from the dash cam and connect to the iPhone instead. So I now have internet. I can go into the Hive Mapper app, go to the settings tab, hit connect wallet. It's going to take me to Phantom. I'm not going to film myself putting the pin in and uh, signing the thing, but you know what to do. It's quite easy. So I signed the wallet connect request in Phantom. And as you can see, I am now logged into Hive Mapper and my wallet is connected. It's asking me to connect to the dash cam Wi-Fi so I can now go back into my Wi-Fi settings, disconnect from my personal hotspot and reconnect to the dash cam Wi-Fi and I will be ready to map. I've tested this offline mapping with Android and iPhone and it works pretty well. The second thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure that when you're uploading the data, at the end of the day when you get back home, connect your Wi-Fi and upload the data with the app open. So you probably want to turn the screen lock off on your phone, both for mapping and for data upload. If you don't have the app open, the data basically doesn't upload and you're not gonna get paid anything. So when you're mapping, have the app open all the time. When you get back home and you connect to Wi-Fi, have the app open all the time too. With the most recent update that they just brought out on the app, you can see how many megabytes or gigabytes of data you're collecting and then uploading. Actually, for best results, you can use a SIM card with unlimited data and allow uploads via your mobile data plan. But just bear in mind, this is huge quantities of data you're collecting. There are days when you collect like five, 10, 50, maybe even 20 gigs of data. So unless you have a totally unlimited data plan, you don't wanna be doing that. And also you might wanna check your Wi-Fi uh, upload limits as well, because it can add up to a lot of data you're uploading. And finally, you wanna make sure that the images you're collecting are definitely passed in QA. So make sure that you've obviously set the dash cam up correctly, it's pointing the right way, it's not getting too much of the dashboard or the bonnet, the car bonnet in the picture. You can put a USB stick into the camera and capture those images, then put it into your computer to check that you're getting good quality stuff. And you wanna make sure that your dashboard is clean at all times as well. If there's like this paper on the dashboard or anything like that, that can be an excuse for the QA reviewers to decline and reject the images you're uploading. So make sure that your windscreen's clean, your dashboard's clean, and the camera's pointing in the right direction. That's it for today, guys. Uh, earnings are actually still really good uh, with these dash cams. I'll make another update on that soon. And if you're thinking about buying a dash cam but haven't pulled the trigger yet, obviously do your own research before you make any decisions. But if you do want to buy one, there's a discount code in the description of this video below. Follow the link and put in the discount code and you'll get 10% off. And as ever, if you want to stay updated with Hive Mapper and other such opportunities, hit the subscribe button below. You'll get a notification when I bring out the new videos. See you in the next one.